In this lesson, we'll learn how to use planar mapping as a method for beginning to lay out our UVs. All right, great. So I've got a, a simple scene here. Just have a sphere right now in there. And I can tell just by looking at this sphere that it has some form of a UV layout. And as I orbit around, you can see that really the checker texture that's applied looks pretty good. So um, this tells me that it's probably using the default UV layout that comes with uh, your primitive shapes here inside of Maya. Let's check it out inside the UV texture editor. Now, instead of accessing it through one of these menus up here, I actually prefer to come over here and use one of my layout buttons so that I can have sort of a split view between my perspective viewport and the UV texture editor. I'll go ahead and right click on one of these guys and I'm going to choose the perspective slash UV texture editor, which is off your screen. I apologize. Nope, clicked on the wrong one. Let me click on the correct one here. You can see the icon will probably change, but more importantly, we can now come over and get a split view between the UV texture editor and the perspective viewport. So uh, we'll go ahead and click on that particular sphere and you can see, yes, indeed, there is a UV layout that takes up the entire zero to one space. So basically, again, by default, your primitive objects inside of Maya are going to come with a UV layout. Now, if you come over here and hit the Create menu, and let's come to Polygon Primitives, and let's just come to the Sphere Options here. You can see that I currently have this option turned off, but this is the option right here that creates those UVs. If you want to create a primitive object without a layout, you can always just turn that off and hit the Create button. And once we get this guy into place, we can hit the space bar, and you can see he has no UVs. So um, now I'm just using simple primitive shapes, but um, a really great way to start off a UV layout, whether you have maybe some default UVs here inside your UV texture editor or not, is to use some kind of a projection. Now inside of Maya, we can actually utilize several different methods of projection. So we'll just pick on this new sphere that I just created here. And I'll come up to the Create UVs menu in the Polygons menu set. And we'll just go ahead and take a look. You can see we can project based on a plane with planar mapping. We can project based on a cylindrical shape with cylindrical mapping. And then spherical mapping will project based on a spherical shape. Uh, we also have automatic mapping, which is a little more complex. We'll get into that here in just a few lessons. But let's come in and look at the options here for planar mapping. So with planar mapping, the first thing you'll see here is we have projection manipulator options, either best plane or bounding box. We'll go ahead and leave it set to bounding box for right now. We'll look at best plane here in just a moment. Uh, now, the next thing is the project from, and uh, more than likely you'll want to choose one of the three axes. Now, mine was set on the z-axis, um, so what that means it'll the, this will do is it'll align the plane with the z-axis, which um, you can see here is this guy right here. So we'll probably put a plane across like that. Now, we could choose to do that from any of the three axes. It's uh, totally up to you which you choose, but I'll go ahead and leave that set to z. Now, we can also project from the camera position. So if we want something unique, we can come in here and maybe orient the camera in such a way that um, it's off all three axes. And when we run this projection with that option selected, that plane will align with the camera position. All right, great. So let me go ahead and just use the Z axis for this demonstration. We'll go ahead and hit project. And what you'll see here is a couple of things happen. First, over in the UV texture editor, we now have UVs. You can see here, basically what's happened is Maya has taken this 3D object and just flattened it. It's taken all the air out of it and squashed it. So that basically, you can kind of see the sphere shape here in the UV texture editor. Now, if we look over here in our perspective view, you can see here that we have kind of this bounding box looking thing around our sphere. This is our planar projection. More importantly, it's actually called our projection manipulator. So um, there's a few handles on this manipulator that we can grab and begin to ch make changes to the uh, projection. So if I grab one of these corners, we can start to scale this guy up. And as I scale that up, watch what happens over in the UV texture editor. If basically this was the image itself for our texture and I scaled it up, we're not using the entire image. So in this case, our 
UV layout isn't using the entire 0 to 1 space. So if I shrink that down, you'll see the UVs get bigger, scaling it up, and they get smaller. Now these handles in the middle on the sides will actually begin to distort this particular guy. And this will probably be a lot easier if I were to just come over and maybe apply a texture. Let me just drop one on there. Fantastic. So now if I come in and I begin to stretch these guys out and squish them in, you can see here that really the texture is starting to get distorted. So you can see here there's a few handles around the perimeter, but this is really inconspicuous little guy right down here in the bottom left hand corner. It looks sort of like a red letter T. Now if we were to actually click on this guy, you'll notice here that we actually get something in the center of our geometry. Now before we move to that, look here at the texture on this sphere. Again, it looks great from the Z axis, but if we orbit around, you can see here from the sides, we're starting to get a lot of distortion or stretching in the texture as it kind of tries to wrap itself around this sphere. Backside looks pretty good, but the sides and the top look terrible. So um, now this little manipulator in the center this is a little different. We can come in here and we can begin to grab the arrows and we can move the projection manipulator. You can see it's sliding from right to left there. We can come in here and grab the squares and we can again start to transform that and basically skew it. You can see what's happening to my UVs. We're squishing them down and it's in effect stretching out my texture here. We can come in and if we look really closely, there's a little ring that goes around this manipulator here. We can actually click on that guy and we'll get our rotation axes. So we can come in and we can begin to rotate this particular projection manipulator off axes. Remember it was on the Z axis, but now we're rotating it off axes. So we could do that if we wanted. And the last thing I want to show you with this projection manipulator is that if we accidentally click away from it, like so, um, you can see it disappears. Now we can get that back just by coming up here and clicking on this little guy. And once we do, we can come over into our channel box and we're going to look for this polyplane projection. If we click on that guy, you can see that we're right back to him and we can continue making changes to this projection manipulator. All right, great. So in this case, um, let's say we're ready to go. We are good to go with this particular projection. So uh, let's just go ahead and click away. And uh, what I'm going to do at this point is I want to show you what Best Plane does. So with Best Plane, let's say we wanted to take maybe just these top faces and create a different projection for those. We could do that um, just simply by selecting them. It might be easier to do this over in maybe the front view. Let me just come over and we'll go to this face selection and grab these guys right here. Fantastic. So over here in the UV texture editor, you can see the faces that I currently have selected. But if we come in and let's go to create UVs and planar mapping options again, this time I'm going to do a best plane. Now when I select that, notice what happens here. The project from options disappear. We can no longer select an axis or basically a place to project from. Now this is what's supposed to happen. So let me go ahead and project and look where the projection manipulator showed up. It aligned with the, the best plane for the selection I had made. So you can see how it's aligned with kind of the faces there at the top and it's projecting right down onto them. So we're getting pr virtually no distortion there. So um, again, this is a planar projection, a planar map that we're using to generate a UV layout here. Now, in reality, it's probably not the best form of projection to use for a spherical shape. Uh, considering that we're using a plane, um, if we wanted to make as little alterations as possible to our UV layout after the projection, then this type of projection is best used for things like flat surfaces or flat objects. Um, not really good for complex objects or curved shapes like this one. So think about maybe a street or a wall or something like that that you need a UV map for. Uh, a planar projection would be ideal in those cases. But for this sphere, probably not a good option. Uh, let's go ahead at this point and move on to our next lesson. 